Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is the first official video of 2023. So happy, happy new year. Although I am pre-recording this video back in 2022, a bunch of my videos are going to be pre-recorded because I am traveling at this time that the this video drops. Hence why the Christmas tree is still up. It's technically, as I'm filming this video, it's technically not even Christmas yet. And I'm typically the type of person that takes down all my Christmas decorations the day after Christmas. I believe that holidays should have a start and an expiration date, and then we move on. But anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful new year. I hope 2023 is the best yet for every person watching right now. Lots of love from my home to your home. Now, before we get into part three of tablet three of the Emerald Tablets, something really fascinating that I just found out, and I'm tickled pink. So I found out that a lot of my subscribers here, my friends here who watch my channel, have been using my videos to help homeschool their children. At first I was concerned because I do have a bit of a potty mouth, but I was assured they're mostly teenagers and they're watching these videos. And I just think that's really, really cool. And I really appreciate you guys trusting me to um, help guide your kids, you know, part of a teacher's job, because I am, I am a teacher out in the real world, not an academic, well, kind of an academic teacher. I do teach philosophy. Um, but you know, part of a teacher's job is to not be needed. And so I hope, if anything, that your children, that if you're using these videos, that they're, fi they're finding the inspiration in the work and they're finding the inspiration in the research and how research can actually be quite fun. With that being said, if any of your kids who are teenagers want to take any of the subjects that I have covered on this channel and do their own deep dive, and present their own deep dive on my channel, I would absolutely love that. Of course, I need the parents to be on the channel with them, on the video with them. I can't have anybody on this channel that is under the age of 18 without a parent's consent. The only kids I ever bring on this channel that are under the age of 18 are my nephew and nieces, and my sister is usually in the room with us when we're filming. So, um, so yeah, so if that's something your kid wants to do, like for extra credit for school or something, if they want to take any of the subjects they find super fascinating that I've covered and do a deeper dive into it, I would absolutely love that. And I would love to have them come on the channel. Maybe it'll be helpful for applying to colleges. I don't know. Um, I can write them a letter of recommendation if they need that for their college or university at admissions, if that's still a thing. I don't even know if colleges and universities are going to be around for much longer, but you know what I'm saying. I guess this is also my way of, of a big old thank you to all the people who have trusted me to, to, share, to share this with their kids. All right. With that being said, let's start with part three of the Emerald Tablets, Tablet 3. Once again, this is part three of Tablet Tablet three. So we're not starting at the beginning of tablet three. We've already covered the beginning of tablet three. We are actually going to be starting, I believe, on verse 23 of tablet three. Once again, I am using Rebecca Marina Messenger's book for tablet three. Usually we use Doriel's, but I really like her translations here. I will put a link to that in the description box below. So tablet three, verse 22. Hark ye, O man, and list to the wisdom. Where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiant bright. The forms ye create by brighting thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Thoughts, commentary in modern English. When does man cease to identify himself by only his name and physical body? It is only in the spirit, mind, or consciousness that man can create those things which he desires. Expand your vision to express the divinity that you are. I have a lot to say about this because this is exactly the the premise of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. As I've said many, many times before, in, Pat in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, we have these three uh, subjects or these three main characters, as my philosophy, my philosophy teacher in India says. We have Prakriti, Badusha, Ishvara. Prakriti is nature. So it's anything with a birth, a life, and a death. And because it has a birth, a life, and a death, it is constantly in a state of change. Parusha is the soul, the Atman, the thing inside of us, the spirit that's eternal. Ishvara is God. Now, Patanjali tells us in the Yoga Sutras that man's suffering comes from one basic confusion. And that is that man confusion, confuses who he really is for who he is only temporarily. And so we know, too, with the, in the, the Hindu um, terminology that the body is the Shakti. So we have the Shiva and the Shakti, the Shiva, the spirit, the Shakti, the creation. 
of the spirit. So the body is the Shakti of the spirit. The body is the soul's creation for this time on earth. But anything that isn't eternal is not real. So that's kind of part of the crux of, of Eastern philosophy is anything that is, is not eternal. So anything that's going to die one day isn't real. It's only temporary. And so therefore, what is real? What is real is your soul, is your spirit. And your spirit has absolutely nothing to do with its creation during this life. So my spirit isn't Bryce. Bryce is just my creation for this existence. My spirit is not a white girl from Georgia. That's just my expression in this life. And so that's where we have things like the ego death. Because the Shakti, even though it's so valuable, and the Shiva and the Shakti have to do that tango together in order for the soul to know itself. But, but that's where ego comes from. Ego is the false sense of self. And so part of spirituality is dying to the ego, allowing yourself to be fully present in your life for me as Bryce, but also knowing that Bryce is not permanent. And so therefore, one day, I will pass away. And when that body passes away, my spirit is what will remain. And where the spirit goes from there is, I guess, up to my own soul contract, your own soul contract, whether that's to create a whole new incarnation or move to a different realm, I don't know. But the point is, the body will die, but the soul never dies. The soul is the master creator of everything. And Ishvada, God, the only thing Ishvada really connects to is Purusha, is the soul, is the spirit. God doesn't you know, you're a co-creator with God. You co kind of created this hologram experience, holographic experience for your soul to know itself, not for Bryce to know Bryce's self, but for my soul to know who my soul is to the obstacles of property. And so that's what he's saying here. It's exactly the same thing in the Yoga Sutras. And once you can grasp that concept, that's when true transformation starts to happen. And usually that transformation starts off pretty dark, you know, because all of a sudden everything that you thought was real you realize isn't actually real and so what is real and again that that's the ego death that's where we have the, the the dark night of the soul the depression but once you move through that you find liberation in the fact that you have lived before this and you will live again your soul knows what it's doing all right she shot contributes her wisdom so again she shot is thoth's divine feminine his, his wife for lack of a better term trying to create only from the physical realm will not get you where you are longing to go those things created with light and power from within are things beyond mere physical. Exactly. Again, everything I just said, all things that are created in physical form were first visioned in the mind and spirit. Boom. The body is the Shakti. It's the creation of the soul. Yet physical forms are required to sustain life. Seek first your inner guidance and, a br and bright will be the path before you. You will find it easier to obtain all your goals by, by starting from the unconscious level. Heed the callings of the bright flame in your heart. We are stardust. From Tablet 3, verse 24. Man is a star bound to a body. Until the end, he is freed through his strife. Only by struggling and toiling by utmost shall the star within thee bloom out new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realms of night. So we're going to get into the idea of that resistance or that friction, how, how obstacles and struggles are very much necessary, which we talked about in the 30-day shadow work challenge. Mankind is composed of elements from the stars. As he transitions from this early form, the star is released, the spirit. In his life, he may struggle to attain awareness of the light within his own star. As mankind realizes the progression of his evolution, he becomes aware of the starlight within and is free from all darkness. As he realizes that star power was within him all along, so shall he ever be free, even in his physical lifetime. And um, Sri Swami Chidananda speaks about this again in the yoga, his commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, where he talks about how once you realize that your physical existence is only just temporary and that what is what is permanent is your soul. You can actually enjoy your life a lot more. You can even enjoy the bad times because, you know, it's, it's not permanent and it's not real anyway. It's just a hologram. It's a reality show created by your soul for your soul to actually understand what it's not. As our friend Shanti over at Aquarius Rising Africa says, we came here to learn what we are not. I came here to learn that I am not Bryce. I am not bound by the elements of physical form because I created this physical form in my soul. I am my soul. You are a soul. You are a spirit. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Humanity is compromised of the elements of space. Contributions from every star species inhabit your DNA. 
You presume that you must struggle and toil to attain the light, and yet you already are the light. You already are this. This is what makes me, well, this is one of the things that makes me the most mad about the church. The church created this whole lie that you have to invite the Holy Spirit inside of you. Honey, you were born with the Holy Spirit inside of you. When the sperm hit, when the sperm hit the egg, there was a flash of light. That's the Shekinah. That's the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. So my question is, if they're convincing you to invite something inside of you, what is it you're actually inviting in? Because the Holy Spirit's already there. So what are you actually inviting in? You also become aware of the forward progression of all things. So too shall you embrace your own light. Exercises to become aware of your own starlight. So this is in Rebecca Marina Messenger's book. So let's go ahead and read this. Relax. Imagine you are in a void of darkness far off among the stars. Stillness is everywhere and peace is in your heart. Look at the blue black void around you. See the twinkling stars of every color. Hold aloft your arm and see that it, it too is blue black. Look closely and see the reflection of the stars within your own body. Merge with the stars. Feel them lining up your DNA responses. Feel the spinal column fluid as it surges throughout the nervous system, releasing the message. We are st star royalty. We are the light. As we see our relations to the stars, we give ourselves permission to go stronger in this light. There's a great value in contemplating the light within each cell. This practice builds your power to create. Have patience with the progress. Yes, perhaps it is a new thing for you, contemplating your own starlight. Yet, it is amazingly effective for awakening ancient memories, which is why you are attracted to the Emerald Tablet in the first place. Knowing that you are starlight will help you remember who you are. Everything in the universe changes. I literally just said that, right? Prakriti, nature, because it has a birth, a life, and a death, the matter, you know, you, you plant a seed, a tree grows, a tree lives, and then it dies. A baby is born, lives, and then it dies. Everything in nature is constantly changing because it runs it follows the laws of property tablet 3 verse 25 remember O oh man that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not everything that has being is passing into yet other being and thou thyself are no exception and this also is a good point about reincarnation is that everything the soul has to then create a new body to experience knowing itself so that's why we keep coming back into body form is because it's a constant wheel and cycle of universal change thoughts commentary in modern english everything that is has been in another form at one time all that is now is currently passing into another form all matter and non-matter are forms of energy Energy simply changes its composition and vibratory rate. You can't um, create energy and you can't stop energy. You can only transmute it, right? This is why it's really, this is why, again, and earlier in these tablets, he talked about not listening, not listening to gossip. Because what does gossip do? It pulls your vibration low. It brings the darkness in. Yeah? We want high vibration, high energy. You and your physical body and mind are constantly changing with time. One day you will leave physically the physical form to be with one and be one with the earth. Shishat contributes her wisdom. All is created by thought first. So anything created by man was once a thought. In nature, a seed becomes... I literally just talked about a tree. I had no idea there. she was going to talk about a tree too. In nature, a seed becomes a tree. A cloud turns into a rain and steam emerges as a mighty river a stream excuse me emerges as a mighty river all is constantly changing humanity humanity is constantly changing and even when you think that you are staying still this continual change is referred to by one of the immutable laws of the universe the law of perpetual transmission of energy everything is constantly changing some changes are not noticed as they are occurring at cellular or atomic levels but they are changing nonetheless don't go breaking the law. Tablet 3, verse 26. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not the law, for such exists only in the, the illusion of senses. Th thoughts commentary in modern English. There is universal law that applies to every situation and every being. It is only an illusion to think that universal law does not apply to you. When you try to go against natural law, it is only an imaginary quest with no substance. 
Shishak contributes her wisdom. Ponder the laws of the universe. When making decisions about your life, there is no need to search for a law book. For the laws that govern humanity are already written in the walls of your heart. As we have said time and time again, follow the wisdom that you already know to be true. It is easy when you go within and heed the prompting of your own soul. And so the big one, like we talk about a lot, is the law of consent. That is why if you are pulling tarot cards or supporting people who are pulling tarot cards on human beings that have not given their permission, regardless of whether that is a celebrity, a politician, regardless of whether you think that person is good or bad, you, even if that person is bad, even if that person has done evil things, you're not above the law. If they have not given their consent for you to pull tarot cards on them, then you too are breaking a, a, a universal law. You too are in low vibration. When we look at the court of law, when we bring these people before trials who have done bad things, we are not bringing in tarot card readers. We're looking at evidence, actual evidence for the person to be tried based on evidence. So I want you to really consider that. Next time you think, oh, I'm going to pull cards and see if my governor is good or bad or not. By doing that, by breaking that consent, you are behaving in a very low vibration, very service to self vibration, which is the, the polarizing you negative. So something to really think about. No one is above the law. No one. No one. Okay? Do not stoop to that level. If you want to know if someone's good or bad or not, look at the content of their character. Look at the evidence. The tarot cards, the divination tools, that's just for you. That's just for you to figure out things for your own self. It's not a tool to gossip. Using it as a tool for gossip is putting us on a negative path. And most of these tarot card readers out there that are doing that, that are pulling on other people, haven't gotten one fucking thing right. So think about that. Spirit's not going to not spirit doesn't play that way. Regardless of whether the person you're pulling tarot cards on is good or bad, regardless of whether they've done evil things or not, if you don't have their permission to pull on them, spirit's not going to let you know about them. They're going to give you a different story because you don't have their permission. Spirit doesn't play that way. That's why nothing these people have predicted has come true. Spirit does not play that way. All right. Wisdom comes to all who seek. Tablet 3, verse 27. Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. As you seek wisdom, wisdom is seeking you. Wisdom is eager to find a home within you. Shishak contributes her wisdom. I refer again to the laws of the universe, the laws of attraction. That which is like unto itself is drawn to itself, or even more plainly, like attracts like. Wisdom is seeking the seeker, even as the seeker is seeking the wisdom. There is a saying we say in the spiritual world, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And then we also say when the student is really ready, the teacher disappears. Because then they have to go out on their own and do it by themselves. Hidden Mysteries from Tablet 3, verse 28. All through the ages, the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. Thoughts, commentary in modern English. Throughout all time, light has been something to search for. Listen to my words of wisdom. That which is most valuable much must be sought after. I have traveled through many dimensions, seeking out the mysteries far too enormous to put into the small text. Yet as you seek wisdom and follow your guidance, you too shall be wise and see greater mysteries. Shishat contributes her wisdom. You have the capacity to take in the light through the magnificence of your hearts and its magne magnetic field. That is the one of the greatest hidden mysteries of all. For after traveling throughout the cosmos, my beloved Thoth stated that he found no greater mystery than that found in the heart of man. Referring to tablet one, verse 15 of the original Emer Emerald Tablets. Free was I of the halls of Amente, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then having drunk deep the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there I found greater mysteries and was glad. 
for only in the search for truth could my soul be still and the flame be quenched within. It's interesting that she brought back in here um, verse 15 from the original tablets because I was thinking of actually the first book of tablet one where um, Thoth is telling us that he's writing these tablets for us to remind us of who we are. And so when we go back to verse 28 and it says throughout all through the ages, the light has been hidden. Awake, O oh man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O oh man, and be wise. It's like, okay, you've been traveling all of these centuries, these years, since the fall of Atlantis. You've been coming in and out of carnation on this earth. And now it's time for you to wake up and remember this because it's all, all the knowledge you carry is within your heart. It's already there. It's within you. You know the truth. You know the truth deep within. Man's heart is full of light. Tablet 3, verse 29. Far neath the earth crust in the halls of Amente, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft I have journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. There near the flower of life ever living, searched I the hearts and the secrets of men, found I that man is living but in darkness. Light of the great fire is hidden within. Thoth's Commentary in Modern English. The halls of Amente lie deep within the earth's crush. Crust. Crush. Let's try that again. The halls of Amente lie deep beneath the earth's crust. I traveled there many times and looked upon the flower of life that gives and sustains life. And I'm going to put up a picture of the flower of life. This was almost like the med bed. Somebody referred to it as almost like the med bed of the ancient technology that regenerates the body. There I searched and contemplated the hearts of men. I found that man does not recognize his own great fire as it's hidden within. Shishak contributes her wisdom. Again, Thoth, my beloved, is speaking of the hearts of man. Although he lived many lifetimes and traveled to the halls of Amenta each time, he still found that man does not recognize the capacity for light that is already within him. And that's the thing, too, right? That's part of the soul knowing itself. All Since we're born, we've been told, told to look for the answers outside of ourselves. We've been taught to go to the doctors, to go to the priest, to go to the politician. Somebody knows better than you. But actually, you carry all the answers inside. It makes me so sad that so many people in this community are looking towards YouTubers for answers when literally the answers are within you. And until we figure that out, that we hold the power, I fear we won't flip. Seven Lords of the Frequencies. Tablet 3, verse 30. Before the Lords of Hidden Amente learned I the wisdom I give unto men, masters are they of the great secret wisdom brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they, the lords of the mente, overlords they of the children of mourning, sons of cycle, masters of wisdom. Formed are they, are not they as the children of men. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the titles of the masters of men. Thoth's commentary in modern English. It was from the lords of the hidden mente, a place of power and renewal, that I, Thoth, learned of many mysteries. The seven lords are masters of great wisdom. Overlords of the children of mourning, sons of the cycles, they are masters of wisdom. These seven overlords are not formed as men, but are composed as frequencies of light and vibration. Three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine are the titles of these masters. They govern and rule other various dimensions, which is interesting because we also see that in the um, Apocalypse of Abraham and some of the other missing books of the Bible this is spoken about too. Their names and frequencies are, hope I'm getting this right, Untanas in the third dimension, Quertas in the fourth dimension, Shaital in the fifth dimension, Guyana in the sixth dimension, Hurtal in the seventh dimension, Simvata in the eighth dimension, Ardal in the ninth dimension. I probably got all of those names wrong, but you guys forgive me, right? These names, these numbers and names rep represent the dimensions and powerful frequencies therein. This is why the numbers begin with three instead of one. Three is the third dimension, which is its own frequency. Each of the seven lords has their own frequency, yet they work together as one unit in their capacity to rule the spheres and dimensions. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Having a panel of overlords, each with his own power, yet working together as a whole, ensures fairness and equal power in all of the dimensions. You may call upon one or all of these frequency lords to be assistants of you. They can also relate to the human chakra system. Look at that. As above, so below. As the micro, so the macro. Boom, boom, boom. It is greatly beneficial to touch each of your chakras while repeating the names of the specific lords. 
back from the future. Future proves past, right? From Tablet 3, verse 31. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they as teachers for the children of men. Live they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life and yet free from death. Rule they forever and with the infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the heart, dark halls of death. Life they have in them, yet life that is not life, free from all the lords of all. Thoughts Commentary in Modern English. These seven lords have come back in time from the future to teach us. Oh my gosh, I was as I was reading that, I was thinking about the Cassiopeians. You guys know I follow the Cassiopeian board. And the Cassiopeians are like us in the future. And it's the most accurate. I, I will put a link to the Cassiopeian board down in the description box below for you guys. It's the most accurate. They don't um, sugarcoat things. They don't sell hopium. They tell you exactly as it is. And they're us in the future, but they won't give us too much information because they still want to leave us with the free will. So I thought that was kind of gave me chill bumps when I, when I read that. All right. Let me start that again. These seven lords have come back in time from the future to teach us because they are pure frequencies. They cannot die as we know death. They rule the dimension forever with infinite wisdom. It is their choice acting as a bond that keeps them as teachers of men. Yes, they do have life, but not life as we experience it. They are completely for free of all dimensional ties, yet they choose to say to be a balance for all of humanity. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Simply knowing the names of the seven lords of frequency is a valuable tool. As you call upon their names, the frequencies they govern begin to vibrate within your own bodies. There is much about you that is in the realm of the unseen. Becoming more aware of your frequency state at each moment is a sign of your evolution. You need not understand it with your logical mind. Be open to understanding and more will come to you. The seven lords came back to you from the future to teach you in the ways of the frequency and light. Call upon them often to help in adjusting your frequencies to higher and higher realms. Relax and let this be easy. Do not fret or overanalyze, but question, always question. It is a poor teacher who does not encourage his students to ask questions. Have patience and knowledge will be awakened within your heart. Trust that your heart will always guide you to truth. The Logos, Tablet 3, verse 32. From forth them came forth the Logos, instruments they of the power are all. Vast is their continents, yet hidden in smallness. Formed by a forming, yet uh, known, yet unknown. Thoughts Commentary in Modern English. From the seven lords of frequencies came forth the principles of divine reason and creative order. These lords of frequencies are instruments of power over all things in this and other dimensions. Although they are great, it is only as one seeks them in the stillness of the heart that they may be found. They sometimes take on forms of existence as needed, yet much unknown wisdom is still to be revealed. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Divine reason, creative order, and the laws are one. Yes, these lords have great power, yet they hide it in their, the very place in which you would not think to look. Within each human is a set of genetic materials that can be activated by reciting the names of the lords and calling forth their power. This is an incurable power that cannot be used. This is an incorruptible power that cannot be used for evil. So all you infiltrators watching this right now is trying to get some wise ideas. You can't use this for evil. The law of vibration is alive in them as it is alive in you. The law of vibration. All particles of all substances are in constant movement. The lords may appear as a human for a cause. Their vibrations are always in movement, even as they may appear to be still. All right, you guys, I think we're going to end it there because starting next week with Tablet 3, verse 33, we're going to go through all of the different um, lords of the seven frequencies. So I think that's a good place to stop it, to kind of take all of that in. Um, yeah, again, I'm going to put this book, a link to this book down in the description box below so you can use it for yourself and start to work through this yourself. As we said in the beginning of reading the Emerald Tablets, the more you read it, the more it's going to raise your frequency. So I would absolutely suggest you guys rereading this over and over and over again. But